I think we are live, Mark. All right. Hey, Kazra, how you doing? I'm all right. I'm right. Thank you. Good to see you again. And and um, I think Ben was uh, was on a moment ago. Oh, yeah. So Ben was connected to us, uh, but apparently uh, we're having some technical difficulties at the moment. Is. Um, is he coming in? I hope so. Yeah. Hope so. Hello. <laughs> Hey Ben. Hey Ben. Welcome Hi. back. Welcome back. Hey. I'll I'll leave I'll, you guys, to, leave it, you okay? guys to it, okay? All right. Sounds All like right. a plan. Sounds like a plan. Hey, uh, hey ben, uh, ben, I don't know. I'm going to just know. speak to the world here. The world I don't know if anybody, know if anybody uh, knows who you are, but uh, you guys uh, are more than welcome to ask questions. This is going to be very casual. Ben and I are ben just going to talk are, like we are hanging out at hanging Diego out Comic Con, Comic which we which did, in fact, did earlier in the year. We're going to talk about Ben's uh, career a bit, uh, influences, and then let you guys ask any questions that you might have. So, Ben, um, are you drawing one of the commissions that we took Yeah, earlier? Can you see that? Yeah, it looks like Baltimore, Baltimore Lord Baltimore. Baltimore. Yeah. Um, so, Ben, yeah, has, I, guess, has, I guess... Did we solve the echo problem? Uh, not for me, not no. For me. But oh, uh, yeah, I will sorry. fight through it. Fight so through in case okay. anybody at home is also getting an echo, I apologize. But we're having... We're having that is why Ben that disconnected, why ben because we're having some echo, some echo uh, issues. Uh, so, so we will... We will yeah, just fight yeah, through just it. Fight if through you guys it. are hearing an yeah, echo, yeah. sorry about that. So I guess Ben so will guess ben introduce will you to the world. To the world. Uh, these, uh, guys these guys might be big fans big or fans never heard of you before. Heard I'm not sure. Before. But uh, uh, why, don't why don't you tell us how long you've been, long you've been uh, in the uh, industry in and, and kind of where you started with things. Well, I think this has been about 17 17 years in comics um before that i was working in film and video games but um comics was what i really wanted to be doing um yeah and most of that time has been spent working with mike mignola on the uh for lack of a better name the mignola verse books I think everybody calls everybody it that. Calls so it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how did you, so first, how did get you first get hooked up with hooked Mike? Up with Mike, um, it was kind of a um, a life goal to do like one book with Mignola one day. Uh, but my first series I did was a it was like a three issue zombie comic at Dark Horse. Um. And Mike happened to see that, and I think he liked it. He thought it was interesting or something. And he he mentioned it to our we had an editor in common. So then I did a tryout thing. I think that was the ectoplasmic man, sort of an origin story for Johann Krauss. And Mike liked what I did with that, and then that sort of led to the next thing, and it just that was that was about i don't know 16 years ago and that's that and we've still got plenty more things planned hey kazra why don't you drop me out so people can look at Ben's art i'm sure they'd rather watch him draw up close than see a split screen yeah and let me know if i start working over here or something wrong way So you work on an A3 right now? This is A4. Oh, A4. Oh, um, gotcha. Yeah. So kind of smaller size. And so, and so you did uh, um, Johan, Johan story, and then story next and thing you know, thing you know they are feeding you more work? You more work. Yeah. Uh, so then the next thing was, well, then it was straight into Witchfinder. Um, and then let, 
and Mike liked what I did on that and then that led straight into Baltimore, which, you know, is a different universe from Hellboy, but similar kind of kind of fun supernatural stuff. So how many years have you been drawing in the Magnolia first now? I, I'm not sure. I think it's about 16. 16 years, I think. So during that period of time, you were always drawing somebody else's script, right? Yeah. And so how did it come So it's either, either been written by Mike or Chris Golden, a few things with John Arcudi, and I think one book with Chris Robeson. I think that's about it. But yeah. Got you. Got you. Well, for those well, that for those don't know, don't Ben know, is writing, writing and drawing, and drawing a, brand a brand new creator own project own called project. Our, Bones Our Bones Dust that is coming out. Coming out. Uh, is it December, December that's, that's coming out, Ben? December 6th is issue one yeah so how did that come so about that with come you about deciding about hey it's time for me to put my own story out there uh well that was always my plan it was always what i wanted to do just do you know at least a few books of my own here and there um this particular one i don't know it, it seemed like a good idea at the time it started out as just a short kind of gag strip idea um and the more i kind of sat with it the more i wanted to kind of wander around in, in the the world a bit more um and it just kind of grew and turned into just kind of happened to turn into the the book my first book um yeah i mean it's not I've got this other thing, this kind of, you know, most sci-fi epic or whatever that um, I've wanted to do for decades, which hopefully, hopefully I'll do one day. So this wasn't like something, something that was the big super, super thing that I felt like I, I needed to do. It just kind of, I don't know, just came along at the right time. And I felt like doing it, and I hope people yeah. like it. How many issues, How is, many it? issues is it? Four. It's four? four, but they're kind of slight. Each one is slightly oversized, so by the end, you're getting about five issues worth of story. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, correct but your style wrong, but seems, style a little seems a little different in our bones dust uh, to me i feel like it's got a little um uh, jeff darrow feel to it is that fair to say yeah i think um i mean jeff darrow is always kind of i think he's always been a big influence on me but not in um kind of the way he treats storytelling and composition more than anything and maybe a little bit of you know line quality but um yeah like i've always been a huge fan of jeff darrow but also you know like obviously mobius is in there um i like working in a sort of a line art style more of a line art style and yeah i did want to make it different to to the mignola stuff that i've done sort of set it apart as as my own thing well it's been getting a lot of positive reviews and you know you were nice enough to show it to me in san diego and i, I was blown away i really thought uh, it was exciting and i like the story and also the artwork cool thank you yeah, so I've been um I've had some really nice feedback from from people that um you know it's been it's been really nice to to get feedback from peers that you know because you never know when you're working on something on your own whether or not it's any good. So it's nice to hear from people 
sure. Whose whose opinions you respect? Who who are saying, you know, yeah, it's all right. For those don't know, uh, maybe we mentioned it earlier, but uh, Ben is from New Zealand. That is the uh, dialect that you're hearing. <laughs> what time is it there? Well, I am uh, in Dallas, Texas, so it's Central Standard Time. It's uh, just after 4 p.m. Right. Uh, how about you? No, it's, it's, no, it's uh, tomorrow, right? <laughs> 11 a.m. on Sunday morning here. Gotcha. gotcha. So what were your early were influences? Your early like influence? what, made you like what made you want to get into comics? Into were you already comics? reading already comics reading before, comics before or video, or games? video games? And oh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, I don't know. Kids. In New Zealand? In New Zealand, we always had a really nice mixture of, uh, you know, you'd get English comics on the on the shelves, you know, uh, bookshops. You'd get the like 2000 AD would be sitting on a bookshelf next to Superman. So that that was um, that kind of stuff was always always around. Um, so yeah, I was always more into that kind of thing, like European comics. Um, what did I start out with? Yeah, we, so when I was a kid, I was you know an '80s kid, so obviously I was reading GI Joe comics, um, and I collected the because um, we didn't really get well, at least you know for kids who were only getting their comics from like uh you know bookshops um we didn't really get underground stuff so the teenage Mutant ninja turtle comic that i was buying was the um you know those old archie ones yeah 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 yeah, the, yeah. right the, right the nickelodeon, nickelodeon version of it yeah of it. yeah and not yeah. that yeah. Thankfully, Thankfully, the original the stuff original I was reading, was, reading was, the was the Mirage Studio Mirage stuff, stuff. Right. Black yeah. and white, Black the early, yeah. grittier. Yeah. No, I didn't even know that was a thing until much later. Uh, but yeah, but then, then I discovered a comic shop, an actual comic shop in Auckland, in New Zealand, which... Like, I didn't see my first comic shop till I was about 12 or something. Um, so then I started to discover lots more interesting stuff. We've got a quick question here. Uh, they're noticing you're working, um, you know, pen and ink. Uh, they're asking if you ever use brushwork as well. Um, no, no, I could never make a brushwork for inking, but. I have, um, you know, done a bit of it, um, a little bit of stuff with gotcha. a dip pen. Um, so what are you and, using right and now? Some, right of, now. So, some of the pens I use, uh, you know, kind of mimic. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, brush tip. But yeah, mostly fiber tip pens. So I were you always a, creative as a kid? Is that kind of how that led, how that led you, to you to want to start, want to start drawing, drawing comic, drawing books? comic books? Yeah, I think so. Just um, yeah, just that thing of. Um, disappearing into your own head for hours, I guess. And I knew this when I was um, young, I knew this older kid who he uh, was into Dungeons and Dragons. And so going to his house was always this exciting thing because he had, um, had this beautiful desk set up with 
all his paints and and you know is really really skilled at, at painting those little tiny miniatures. Miniatures, miniatures, miniatures and just the i was obsessed with the whole idea of this this little space that he had set up this crafty little space that always stunk of those paints i just thought that would be the coolest way imaginable to spend your whole life is sitting in a little space like that Speaking of your good friends good. with uh, a lot of people yeah, that do that, that professionally, professionally. Yeah, weather, right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, excuse me. I ended up there for um, I was there for a while on Lord of the Rings. Um, so, what were you doing for that? Doing for that? Initially, I worked on storyboards back when it was only going to be two films um yeah it was it was really small back then and like you know peter would come in and chat to you and then once it once it all kicked off he whenever he came in he'd have an entourage of like 15 people around him and and it was like you weren't allowed to even look at him um it wasn't it wasn't really like that but a little bit um so I was on storyboards for a couple months, and then after that, I was in the workshop, where the workshop just just doing really boring stuff like hammering leather and dyeing leather and gluing, Wait, gluing and painting stuff. Working, working on leather, leather. Yeah, yeah. So it was. Um, yeah, it was pretty boring. I mean, I got to do some fun stuff like uh, the the Moria orcs. You know, when they go into the mines of Moria and all those mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. goblin orcs come out with the troll. So they were all their armor was all sculpted around my body cast because I was a smoker and I was in my early twenties, so I was skinny as a rake. <laughs> um, I think that's my oh and i designed the armor for uh an orc character that was cut from the final film so that's those are kind of my only real claims to fame on that that's funny so yeah so so eventually i um i realized that i was completely miserable because i was hammering leather and gluing things and it wasn't really in my plan so i um I thought I'd leave and um and it worked out. So you were, so you were specifically, working specifically working with them with on them Lord, Lord of the Rings, Lord right? Rings. There wasn't yeah. other projects other after projects that. After that. No, I went back a few years later and just did like three weeks or something on um you know because i still get along with everyone there um i went back and what was it it was i don't think it was anything specific it was um uh developing different ips basically and i don't think any of it was stuff that went anywhere So we were talking so we were about our uh, bones stuff and that you're writing, writing that. that um, um, it led me to, led me to think, you know, obviously you know, you'd worked obviously with Mike with forever, forever not with other, other writers. So, writers. so had you ever thought you about thought pitching about an, idea an idea within his world his to world write and draw it? Or was, was that just not that really on the table? Um, or not something you wanted there, to do? There were a few things that, came out of conversations that Mike and I had. Um, there's there's two Baltimore stories that kind of, I kind of think of as coming from those conversations. Um, but yeah, no, um, it's kind of, I don't know. I don't know what I'm allowed to say. But um, Fair enough. Fair enough. 
things things are going to be different moving forward. <laughs> right now, you and right, Mike are you working Mike on a project after, after our, bones our bones dust. dust. Once, you that, right? once you complete that, right? Yeah. Well, I'm in the middle of a um, you know an, another Mignolaverse story, but then after that. There's a, a different thing which which nothing's been said about yet. So oh. I have to. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I thought that was, thought that was somewhat public somewhat information. Public so that information. isn't so public that information. Public I can information. stop talking about it now. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> but you know, there's there's a tease. Yep. For those yep. not in the know, not now you know, now uh, can uh, start. Okay. Keeping an eye keeping open, an eye in, open the future. in the future. Yeah. For ben and, ben and Mike to do something together. Yeah, something. So you've drawn so your you've fair drawn share fair of Magnolia verse characters. Magnolia do you have a least have favorite, a or a favorite or a most favorite most character, favorite to, draw? character to, draw? Um, to draw? I've got most favorites. I don't think I can have a least favorite because it's all, you know. Mm -hmm drawing comics so it's it's um whenever i'm feeling shitty about my job i try to remind myself i'm being an asshole because it's it's drawing comics for a job so you don't really i don't think you get to be grumpy about it um but yeah like uh i think koshche and frankenstein are the ones i'd feel closest to enjoy drawing the most well it seems like it with seems like with koshe you're koshe, you're in my opinion in your, my style opinion, your style just continue to, continue to uh, i don't know the right word to right say word. but uh, to me it's some of your best stuff your like best it, stuff. you really thank you went really from being went from being very good to, very good to um, um i don't know just the next just level, the next level. Um, thanks I love the detail of him killing the crab and uh, just there seems to be so much going on, but in a good way. Yeah, I'm worried about that because I um, I just realized recently since San Diego that um, I've been uh, inking half blind for the last two years. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. so the fact that everyone really loves Koshche and I was partially blind inking it is, is kind of a worry. <laughs> Hopefully you're Hopefully doing, you're doing something, something about that. About that. Yeah, yeah. I because uh, it crept up on me. I didn't realize it was. Um, I needed glasses until, like, just a, a few months ago. So that's new. Mostly working Thanks. for up close. I'm guessing not far away. Yeah, kind of like reading reading glasses. But yeah, so I need it for inking anything now. So we're getting some positive feedback from the crowd here. I'm sure you can't read anything since you're drawing, but um, Mr. Underhill's stating that Ben's quiet pages are so good too. Uh, and Brent MCD is saying he loves Koshe, that uh, Ben's version of Frankenstein is awesome as well. Cool. Thank you. So some love some coming, in. coming in. So how did you come how up with the Our Bones, Bones Dust idea? Was idea it just one of those things that jumped to you in the shower or, or just something you were watching a video movie and it triggered an idea of your own or what? I can't remember. It's, it's like anything, it's going to be a whole combination of a million things. But... Um, it started out as a gag idea for a um, kid, like a sort of a kid Conan in the apocalypse. Um, but yeah, but then it just, it's a whole mixture of different, different things that I was interested in and thinking about. And uh, like the fact that AI is in there, it was this book was sort of almost done about a year ago basically so it's been sitting around for a while and in that time ai has turned into an actual 
thing that's sort of affecting everyone. So yes, yes, a kind of it's just the beginning, that, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, and that's so. What I've done doesn't address that because it's all happened too fast. Um, but it was based on stuff that I was reading about it, you know, a few years ago. Um, but anyway, I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> what AI? You sure it'll AI, be fine? Sure because be fine. <laughs> I'm thinking we <laughs> no, need to shut down no. Skynet already. I don't know about you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um. Well, I mean, this the stuff I was reading about it a few years ago was sort of saying expecting it to hit technological singularity in the 2040s so the idea that ai would become self-aware they're expecting that to happen in the the sort of 2040s but i think that must have all sped up by now with the right things are going but yeah so the idea is it'll either um it has the capability to you know that expression um a, a sufficiently advanced science would be indistinguishable from magic is that idea that it could literally do anything or it could just wipe us all out i think we're going to have issues before that before in that, yeah. once ai starts, AI starts um eliminating, eliminating jobs, jobs that those people aren't, aren't going, to going to know what to do, how to, how to get jobs, because that is their that is area of expertise. And now we're going to have, you know, 30% of the population, of the population or whatever or replaced, or with replaced with AI related, AI -related you know, um, yeah. software, oh, software or computers. Or computers. Yeah. It's all terrible. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's not good. Um, but the threat, the threat of AI wiping out the human race is um, more stupid than like the Skynet thing of like, oh, you're dangerous for the planet. It's more like if the thing I read was if if an artificial intelligence's original programming was something like perfecting handwriting and that program was the first thing to become self-aware, that what's to stop that program then from sending out a gray wave of nanobots across the planet to deconstruct everything in its path all organic and and inorganic matter just deconstruct it and then um use that to make piles of paper and ink and pens and machines that hold the ink pens to perfect handwriting so what you get left with is a planet covered in stacks of paper with perfect handwriting like that's the threat that it's 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 more stupid than um you know evil robots that want to get rid of humans it's 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 that the stuff you can't really plan for and so and then it could then move out into the universe and just fill planet after planet after planet with stacks of paper with perfect handwriting we, we <laughs> that's hilarious, that's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> but uh we have some yeah, questions have here are you inking yeah. over yeah. pencils yeah. or blue line blue which i know line. how you work so you can talk about that kind of gray it's line actually right actually. yeah yeah so i drew that on my Cintiq pad yep um yep. and uh, and then, yeah, print it out on card and blue line, and then, yeah, inking over the top of that. We also have a question. Have a question. Uh, do you have a dream character owned by somebody else that you would have loved to have worked on? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I'll probably think of something later. I don't know. There's a few characters around that I'd love to have a go at. So were um, you always, so were you always 
um, yep, so more sci-fi, sci-fi and, and, and and you know 2000 AD kind of stuff as opposed to superheroes or did you ever read or yeah. you know enjoy that stuff yeah, as well I um the only superhero stuff I've really enjoyed was stuff where it was like a an artist mm-hmm. I really liked um yeah I still have a slight kind of confused dad thing about superheroes so what were so some what artists that you liked that you liked uh, i don't know I don't if you know can think and draw I, I know yeah I, yeah yeah you mean you mean artists that have drawn superhero stuff that i like well just uh just, you know obviously, you know, obviously either that or just that, in general just like general, once you started you getting started into getting comics into professionally, professionally did you see, did you see other guys stuff, other guy that, stuff that you know made you, you know, made you rethink the way you work, way you work or just or influenced, influenced how you work how you work um i think a lot of people had the same reaction to james Harron when he first started putting work out which is like fucking just i mean heavens to betsy this dang kid because he was young he was in his early 20s i think uh when he first started working in the um on the mignola stuff and i remember raving to the editor about him and just sort of saying i don't know if you'll be able to keep him because he's and the editor at the time didn't see it because you know he was a goof but yeah, um, I think James Heron had that effect on a lot of people and changed, <laughs> made people worry about their jobs. <laughs> um, but that, something like that doesn't come along all the time. I mean, a lot of the artists I like now that I'm obsessed with uh still the artists I was obsessed with, like in the early 90s it's kind of the same the same people yeah, who were some who of those of those um mignola and jeff darrow otomo um i feel like i don't really know a, a lot of um underground stuff that's going on I feel like it's been years since I've seen something like, you know, like Al Columbia or Dave Cooper. Those guys would be great. Or I might just be waffling. I might not even be concentrating. <laughs> I don't know how you guys do it, honestly, uh, being able to focus on drawing, especially as tightly as you do, and then have a conversation and make your mind make your mind work on other things you know yeah i don't know it's um i don't do it often so it is a little bit weird but i guess it's like when you doodle on the phone you know if you're just drawing a picture what some wacky thing while you're chatting i would i don't think i could do this if i was penciling if i had to think a bit more So when you are working, what are you typically doing? Um, listening to music or watching videos on another screen? Um, yeah, a bit of both or audio books. Uh, okay. Yeah, audio books okay. or podcast. Um, yeah, like uh, listening to something usually. So you mentioned mentioned uh, possibly possibly, you know having a go or thinking about having a go at someone else uh, property or property um um, any of those come to mind mind. Uh, we have some people Uh, people mentioning that that, um have you ever drawn drawn dread before before or any 2080 characters characters. Um, i like to think i must have but i can't think of I don't know if I have. I should give that a go. I've got a list um, of, you know, like character pinups 
the, actually every couple of years I write out a list of characters and Judge Dread or Mean Machine are always on the list. But uh, I usually don't get around to it. I was thinking the Brent, other day that might be a, that might be a good way to do commissions is to put out a list of of characters like a reverse commission draw, list. So here's here's the characters I'm going to draw. Who who wants which one? Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, if well, it, I mean, if it, if it's something you really want to do, obviously, obviously, in my, in my experience, experience, that means you're going to do your best work. Your so best work, anybody so interested right. in those characters, I would think, would jump at that. Jump at that. Yeah. Brent MCD Brent thinks you would do a great, do a great uh, strontium, dog, strontium dog. By the way. By the way. All oh, right. And we're being asked about what you're drawing. I will answer in text, or we can basically just explain right now. Uh, this is we took a very short list of pre commissions, and this is a uh, uh, Lord Baltimore. I can't tell what that is in the foreground, but he's coming up on something. I don't know. Oh, is that, oh, is that, is that part of him? I can't him. tell. Whereabouts? Is that his leg? Is that his leg? That? Yeah, yeah, that's his wooden yeah. leg. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Okay. gotcha. Now, Bo Baltimore was Baltimore already done, was right? Done, that was right? an existing yeah. character existing when you character came in to that, or was that yeah. something that you helped put together? Well, they there wasn't any comics of Baltimore at that point. Okay. It was oh. a um, a novel, and so they yeah got me into do the the comics of the character. If you decide you'd like to do the reverse commission thing, let me know. I know um, we get from time to time commissions for you, and obviously we just able to do a few this time um, due to your schedule. Yeah, I, I've been surprised how much um, time gets taken up with um, getting my own thing out. It is it is quite different to. Um, work for higher stuff there is a lot more you need to be doing right with you writing it and then also, i'm guessing having to do some publicity you know, get the word out yeah and just just managing you know like print files and all that kind of stuff it's not something you have to worry about when you just you just draw it and send it in Now, did you have an editor on this project? Um, no, I I had a really close friend who is actually uh, called uh, Kelly Sheehan, who's uh, he actually is a part of a group here in New Zealand that a sort of a small press publisher that do a lot of great stuff called uh, Earth's End Publishing, um, and they specialize in a lot of great small press New Zealand collections. Um, and he he was really valuable as someone to basically bounce stuff off of. So we were sort of, I was constantly talking to him about it. But other than that, no. Brent has a Brent question. Has a question. Uh, how much back and much forth back is, and there is there with uh, Magnola and creating and new character, character designs? Um, it really changes all the time. Um, sometimes there, sometimes there's a lot, and sometimes none at all. It varies a lot, and and. I can't really predict because um, it, it it's not like a really important character will sometimes be one that takes hours to lock down and a small character you only see in one panel will 
will be easy. Sometimes it's the opposite. Um, but usually it's, it's pretty um, hassle free. Um, when you first started working with him, did he provide you with layouts and a thing or did yeah, he just, I think he just give you the script and let you go? Um, I think he was doing that a lot more back then. It was like even with Duncan Figredo. Right. right. Yeah, I worked, I worked with worked Duncan, with so Duncan, that's why I asked because I'm familiar with him doing that a lot with people, lot with people at least a yeah, while back. I'm not sure how he does now. Um, yeah, he used to. Even Even now he might send... Sometimes it's just easier for him to explain something by sending a quick sketch of the layout. So I think even in um, Koshe and Hal, there might have been one or two pages where he sent a sketch along for it. I'm going to show... Um... Just some things uh, that I have here. First, the print that you and I uh, put out at San Diego. Um, we can talk about right. that for a second, and you can yeah. explain kind of uh, where this image comes from. So uh, I'm just um, manually showing it on the screen. Uh, this is a print that uh, Ben and I put out at San Diego. It's going to be making it available online sometime soon. So. Obviously, this is a different looking Hellboy. Uh, big Hellboy fans probably recognize it, but why don't you uh, tell people about it? Yeah, so that was the, um, based on the first drawing Mike ever did of Hellboy, which was, I think, for a convention book, maybe. I could be wrong. Uh, and I'd seen some other people do do their versions of it and it looked like just a fun thing to have a go at so it's just uh, my version of that very first version of hellboy from when was it 1991 uh it on there. yeah that's right that's what we have on there it's been a hot minute yeah, no, uh, I've, I've been, been reading, reading, I've been reading that stuff that since that it first stuff, came out first myself. myself. Yeah. So we yeah, have I some questions. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going into a comic shop to pick up that issue of Next Men that had, just because it had a couple pages of, it was like, I think one of the first appearances of Hellboy. Right. So we have, uh, Dave, we have uh, Dave, David Jacoy is asking, uh, have you been to any of the countries where Lord Baltimore travels through, or was it all reference? Um, it was all reference, but I have since been to a lot of the places that I drew. Um, which, you know, yeah, that's nice. I probably got it wrong. You know, it's it's supposed to be sort of a fantasy version of the real world. Um, but yeah, it is cool going to going and standing in places that I've drawn for some of these books. With you living in New Zealand, in were, you New Zealand were you able to use um, your, own countryside your own countryside a lot as, a lot as you know as reference you know, for reference for your drawings at I all? Think, yeah. At all. Yeah, I think I did. I can't think of anything specific, but I know I, yeah, would have, do use a lot. So we've got some positive comments here. Mr. Underhill is saying that commission is looking great. It's looking great. And Josh Flanders, man, I've been such a fan from uh, of Ben's work for years on all the Magnolia verse books. Awesome, thanks. 
So this one is, uh, you just described it as Battle Ready Baltimore. Ah, okay, sure that's, that's the Battle Ready one. That's yes, one gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, uh, we had, uh, yeah, we had uh, two uh, Baltimore, Baltimore commissions out of this go round, and then uh, Arzak from Mobius, right? From Mobius. That was another one. Yep. Uh, so, and oh, that was the start started. of the oh, some, oh. someone wanted Baltimore with a harpoon. Yes. Right. Yes. So that's right. the start of that one. Very cool. And Very cool. This is Arzak. Awesome. Looks good. Awesome. good. On the bird skull. Is that, bird. is that showing up? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. we can see it well. Yeah, we can see it well. And, and yeah, so after I've after I've printed it out in um in blue line, I might go in and touch up with a bit of pencil or something first. But it's mostly all there in the blue line. I don't know that you've ever sat down and timed yourself, time but, yourself um, but any idea how long, any idea how long it takes you to do a, a piece like this? Um, no idea. Um, or a page for... I, I know that the inking is going slower. With, right, because you're talking. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But... Um, I think I did, I don't know, working pretty slowly. I think I penciled these all three in about two days with lots of interruptions. So, yeah. We've got a question from Mr. Underhill. Have you seen the promo image for The Walking Dead spinoff that looks just like a Baltimore image? image no nope. no i haven't either i haven't either what's it called uh i am not sure I am not to be sure honest with you uh, uh, and not sure if they're talking about, sure the talking about the one that features daryl or or if there's another spin-off spin um, um, i haven't i haven't Watch anything other watch than anything the main one. Other than the main one. Okay, so it is the okay, Daryl Dixon. The Daryl Dixon spinoff spin that he's talking about. That he's talking about. All right. So, Mike. So Mike. Um, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. C I C H Y says beautiful. Um, I think he is our Arzak customer, actually. Oh, okay. Cool. Oh, Daryl is standing Darryl with a standing with a huge harpoon, huge harpoon is why he was, is why he was saying, saying it looked saying right it looked like they like they had taken it from Baltimore. It from Baltimore. I'm assuming the projects we've the talked projects about we've talked are about what you're going to bring, bring for the foreseeable future. You don't have any other PPRD related projects. Projects. On your schedule. No, I have, your schedule. I have a three-issue thing I'm doing at the moment, which is um, still semi. It's not cost J, but I think it will end up being collected somehow with with that stuff. I think it sort of sits with that stuff. Okay. Um, okay. And and then there's there's something else which will be. Um, what I'm working on for quite a while, I think. Hopefully.
So stylistically, how do you think you came about with your the way you draw things? Did you just come up with it on your own? Did you have did you go to art school or have any formal lessons? I went to. It wasn't. I don't think it was an art school. It was more like a tech technical institute. Um, for for one year, and that was like the foundation year before the art school. Um, but in New Zealand, like I really thought I was going to go along and I was going to get taught, you know, by these great masters and get taught oil painting and all of that kind of stuff. But it was more um, cutting coloured shapes out of cardboard and <laughs> um, they, they were more trying to steer everyone to modern art because they thought that was more valid. So I disagreed and um, didn't bother going on to the art school um, and decided to be self-taught. Uh, but I also had a, a good mentor quite young, an artist um, called Martin Neiman, who's a New Zealand artist that did, he did a lot of, he did some Lobo stuff. He did a series called White Trash. He did a great comic with uh, Lobo versus Dead Man. Uh, and then he did a bunch of covers for Verotic. Uh, so he was sort of a mentor. I used to, um, in high school, after school, I'd bus into town for an hour just to go and hang out with him in his studio. And he, he was someone who was just really bright and had uh, a lot of like sensible information to share about, you know, comics and um drawing comics as a job and being professional and all that kind of stuff so he influenced me a lot and for years i was just trying to um copy him really um, how did you first meet him did you first meet him oh i was um he came into a comic shop i was working in a comic shop um, and his, his studio was just around the corner. Uh, so having a good mentor, I think, is important. I think that can help a lot. I know the answer to this question to this because question. we talked about it at San Diego, it but, at San Diego uh, but do you have do you artwork have that you have framed on your walls on that your belong walls, that to other artists that you have artists, either purchased or purchased acquired or through acquired friendships, and stuff? friendships and stuff? Yeah. And, should we, and who are some of those should artists? We do a quick, Let's see. Mike is one of those. Mike is one of those. Should we do a quick art tour? Sure. Is that going to sure. work? Yeah, I you my think you can. I've got it. Um, Quick studio tour here. Studio tour. Right. So there's a guy, Davis. Awesome. There's a Martin Eamon. That's very cool. There's very cool. a Mobius. There you go. It was reflecting, but now we can see it. But now it's yeah. Hard. Yeah. Hard. yeah. Jeff. Jeff Darrow. Jeff. Oh. More Jeff, Jeff Darrow. Darrow. More Jeff Darrow. More Jeff Darrow. More Jeff Darrow. Colin Wilson. He's a 2080 like, uh, artist, 2008 right? Artist. Yeah, yeah. New Zealand comic artist. He left here, I think, in the late seventies, early eighties. And he sort of helped, I think, found a lot of 2000 AD. Um, there's a guy Davis. Um, 
but yeah, he took over Blueberry for Mobius. Um, and now he lives in Australia. Uh, Mike Mignola hand. There's a. Oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. There's another Mignola. Very nice. Yeah, I haven't got nice. framed. Yeah. And I would give you an art, a studio tour, but it's it's too messy. Yeah, well, there's a quote. There you go. Yep. Thanks for running us through some of your art collection. That's collection. awesome. That's awesome. I assume you've met, I assume you've met uh, Jeff, uh, before. Jeff before. Yes. Before. No. Yes. No. Yeah. Um, as a fan, and we've, um, you know, chatted, chatted over Messenger and stuff over the years. Mr. Underhill asked Mr. what Underhill was in what uh, was the hand that the Magnola hand that drew. Was it dark? Drew, was it dark? Uh, it's a coin. It's from the um, first novel he did with Chris Golden. I brought it off Christine at San Diego in 1997. It was $25. <laughs> yes. yes. His rate's it's gone up just a little bit since then, but uh, with, yeah, good yeah, with good yeah. reason. Yeah, yeah. And Jeff, did you, uh, Jeff, did you uh, buy those buy those from him directly from as well? Him directly as well. Uh, yeah, the two inked ones I did. The pencil one was a art swap with someone, because having having something from hard boiled was sort of a grail thing. Did you ever read, you ever read um, uh, any Miller any Sin Miller, City stuff? Sin Obviously, City Miller stuff. wrote. Oh yeah, yeah. that with Carol. So. That with Carol. So. Yeah, I think it was sort of that era that set set me on the path, like the. What was it like early 90s mm -hmm. all the stuff that frank miller was churning out and, um there's so much more experimental stuff being done you had kevin eastman pumping millions of dollars back into the industry it, it was sort of a golden era for me and um i think that's I think being from that era is sort of what um, got me stuck on doing this for a job. Well, it looks like we well, have, have a limited, limited time, time left. Limited uh, time if anybody left. has any anybody last minute questions, any for last ben, questions for Ben, uh, I will try to get I something, in. To get something um, in. Um, so, so our bones dust. Our bones um, dust. Well, I guess um, we'll close with that. We'll close with um, that. The, first um, the first issue, issue as the final order cutoff order already occurred. Cut already occurred. It, I know I put in yeah. my number in my, my shop. shop. I wasn't. I couldn't, remember I couldn't remember if it closed already. Closed already. Yeah, yeah. Final order cutoff has been, but um, if you haven't asked for it at your comic shop, I think um, I know Image will be paying attention to sort of reorders so if you haven't ordered it then still you know talk to your local comic shop i think yeah i know i'll have uh, yeah, some I'll extra have, copies uh, some uh, here in dallas, dallas if anybody in dallas, if wants anybody to come by to come or uh, by. can't get a copy you can reach out to me you can reach out to me cool looking forward to seeing it in print seeing it in print uh, getting yeah. lots of yeah. comments of lots people of appreciating, people appreciating uh, us, being uh, us being on. Cool. I hope I didn't just 
I have no idea what I've said. I hope it wasn't oh, just well. nonsense. It was, <laughs> it was probably just nonsense. Well, appreciate everybody, appreciate everybody uh, listening uh, to uh, us. Go on, and, uh, go on and if you're interested in it, <laughs> uh, any of Ben's uh, artwork, uh, we have it in his gallery, in his gallery for sale gallery on splashbootart.com. So thanks, guys. So thanks, I guys. think we are on borrow time, time at this point. Time. So uh, cool. Kajer, okay. Well, we'll um, once these are done, we'll we'll put them up on social media and things for people to see. Yep. Yeah. That yeah, one's, yeah, that one's looking, looking pretty close. Pretty close there. So, there, so. yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing that with us, Ben. And uh, ben, obviously, and, uh, we'll talk obviously real, we'll soon. Talk real soon. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thank you, guys. Right, thank you, guys.